Hey, welcome back to Steve's Restorations. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I'm going to show you how to put an air conditioner power steering bracket on this early Bronco. It's a pretty simple install. I had to make some modifications to mine, uh, and I'll show you how not to and how to do that. So, uh, the power steering gearbox, I've already installed it. I had Joshua at Sterco rebuild it. Did a great job. I highly recommend him. I'll put the link to his shop. So come on along. I'll show you how. All right, here's the components that come in the two different kits that make up this air conditioner power steering bracket. The first one is this. These both come from Vantage Air. The first one is an 11, a 131107. That's the air conditioner bracket. This is everything that comes in it. This one here is the power steering edition kit and it is a 131108 Vantage Air. And this is what comes in it. Now the air conditioner bracket, it comes with these three spacers, these three 716 bolts, these three 38 bolts, and these other 38 bolts here for mounting the compressor. So what they have you do is some small block Fords, the holes that are in the head are 7 sixteenths. Well, we're not going to use those because ours are 3 eighths. Then these three spacers here, here, and here. That would be if you're not going to use the power steering setup. At that point, this just bolts on with these three bolts. Real simple. Mount your compressor. The compressor is adjustable. Piece of cake. But we're going to add this to it. So here's how it adds. The lower one gets changed out. The upper one stays the same here. The lower one gets the short one from the power steering kit. It goes on here first. Third bolts here. And then it has this bracket here, short spacer here, and this spacer that comes with the air conditioner bracket does no longer get used. Kind of wasteful in parts. They make one kit so it fits several things. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't get used. But, as with anything else I have, when I have extra parts, I save them. Might use them for something. Okay, here's where it gets funky. The way they want this to be mounted is to use the rear pulley. It's how it all lines up. Originally, when I put this on the Bronco, I made the bracket from scratch. I had it probably running on the rear pulley at one point like this. Okay, on this side of my pulleys. Well, when I put an aluminum radiator in it with a big fan, no longer room right here. The fan would hit it. So what I did was I did this. I moved the compressor to the back side of these tabs and I had to shave the compressor here to make this front pulley line up properly. Don't do all that. If, you don't, if, if you're putting this on from the start, you're fixing to make the modification of this bracket so that you can use this front pulley instead of this one. I watched part of a YouTube video that Tom's Bronco has out and he explained just verbally how to modify the, the bracket to where this lines up properly. And I'm going to show you exactly what they're talking about. If you want to use the outer pulley on that compressor, you have to move this whole bracket further back by 5 eighths of an inch I think is what they said. That's the width between those two pulleys, centers of those pulleys. So the really the best way to do that, and I'd, I think I'd have done that prior had I known, but my compressor is kind of messed up, so I just made my compressor work. I didn't want to spend a hundred dollars on compressor. What you do is you take off five eighths of an inch on this spacer, this one, and the one in the front 
take five eighths of an inch off. You put it all back together and bolt it on, and that brings this compressor pulley back far enough to where it lines up on that front pulley, like we need with our big fans. And... So, the problem is, is that brings the power steering it brings the power steering bracket too far back so they won't line up so it has to get spaced out like this okay what you do is you use those pieces you cut out of here and here you use those right back here okay and the third piece that you cut off this other side you're going to end up putting back over here on this side okay does that make sense that should line everything up perfectly the way you want it but mine's a little bit different and I'll show you what I had to do to make mine fit. So that's the proper way. Now we'll show you the wrong way, the way I did it. So just come along for a ride here. First thing we're gonna do here, really, this power steering pump. This is the one that I use, it's an A1 Cardone. Okay, the two spacers that come in power steering pump kit there's gonna be one that goes here and one that goes here they supply you with these four bolts that go here the two longer ones go here where the spacers are at space side I'm going to show you how to put a pulley on in one of these and I'll show you the tools that are involved in putting it on and taking it off. There was some discussion I saw on a Bronco page that a, a kind of a newbie was questioning how to how to get this pulley off. And if you look on the inside, it's got a hex head. That's there, uh, from what I understand, when they're assembling this thing from the back side so they can hold it. He was thinking you have to grab it and turn that and you don't. There's one way that it goes on and one way that it goes off. To put it on, it's threaded on the inside of here. You put the pulley in place. You take this power steering pulley installer. You thread it down in there. And you start tightening this nut right here. And tighten it down and it pushes it on until it's flush. And that should get me where I want it. And the only way to take it off is you can't pry it, you can't do anything, you've gotta have a tool similar to this. It's a power steering pulley remover. This particular one's pretty simple. It's got a collar that fits up over this front lip. Comes apart, it fits over the lip. So we wanna use that there. So you can see it's made a little bit different on both sides. So it goes around the groove fits in here like that and this collar holds the whole shebang together then you have to take this one while you're holding the bottom nut is you will take this and tighten it down and what it does is it yanks on the pulley and it pulls it straight off pushes against that shaft as it's tight as you tighten down on this it pulls it right off only way to do it this one on Let's see how I do it so here's the proper way is you would just take it and drive it down until it's flush. I'm lazy, so here's how I'm gonna do it. You 
gotta check it every so often to see how far how far down it is. See, I've got probably another half inch to go. Now this pump on the back side, it'll have part of part of the rear bracket that comes off the back side of the of the air conditioner bracket. It's a small bracket that comes here. It's going to use this spacer and this long nut that comes with the power steering kit. So that one there is going to get used. This upper one on an old core, you can see it's got a couple of studs that kind of come out. So we're not going to use those. So what we'll use is a 3 8 bolt in there. But look out, you better check depth. We'll look at depth here, just to make sure that isn't too long. And it's not. Right, here's a little trick to keep bolts like this in place because they're giving me fits to keep trying to slide out of position. I'm going to get an O-ring. I'm going to put that O-ring and shove it right back in here. It's going to keep this in place. It's going to keep it from pushing back. Do the same on this top one. also mention that one thing nice about this this particular bracket kit unlike some of the other ones this mounts the power steering pump solid and it uses the air conditioner to pivot for the adjustment that is way easier than the type that use off the power steering pump 
it's hard to get in here it's hard to it's hard to make it pivot properly without bending this outside case so it's a good kit All right, so I was mocking this thing up real quick just to check for the alignment of the pulleys to make sure everything kind of lines up properly. And it's pretty close, but coming to a problem here. I need to pull this pulley out a little bit. Uh, it's lined up close enough to work, but this dang pump has got slop in it, brand new pump, which really it's not going to hurt anything particularly. For the exception that it's going to it's going too far back and it's hitting these bolts that hold the bracket to the pump so as it comes along here it's hitting it biggest thing is i'm going to need to pull it forward so when it's in the resting position back this direction that it's not going to hit those bolts no matter what so i'll show you all how i use this by puller to take it off That'll be fine. Let me see if I can straighten up. It's a little cattywampus on this pulley. Right there. Pull it out just a little bit more. I don't have the proper length belt for it yet. After I get everything kind of put in place, I'll, uh, I'll take a piece of 3H rope and I'll, I'll put it around all four pulleys. Figure out exactly what I need. I don't want to go, if it's lined up with the bottom groove on the crankshaft, I don't want to go too much on it. So I'll show you my mistake here. Uh, and if I'd have cut the back side off like, like it's supposed to be done, I wouldn't have to do these modifications. So I moved it to the back side, the back side of the bracket. That left me with a big gap here on this side. I made a spacer. It's going to go in there, and since since this got moved back, it goes all the way back to the back here where the valve cover is, and that lower bolt has to be relieved. Okay, you have to cut some of that out so where it won't hit the valve cover too much, otherwise you won't have much adjustment. And this top mount, since I moved it back, in order for it to work properly in my case, I had to put a small bend in the upper adjustment part of the bracket. Good work. I slipped the coupling on here so that I could get a measurement for the shaft where I need to cut it. So I'm going to start the tape measure about right there. I'll probably make it a little shorter to where it goes there. But we'll get that measurement from, from this point. To under the dash where the column mounts to that hole and that the center of that hole is 39 and three quarters center the outer edge quarters. That's where we'll cut it.
Now here's the U-joint that goes down the column. This goes on the box and this end comes on the column here and you can see it's it's got flat edges on it. So what I'll need to do is I'll need to, to grind this outer portion off so this will fit down in there and then we put a set screw on it. I might even tack weld it just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere. Well, what I've decided to do on this is I'm going to countersink a hole on both of these set screws. I'm not going to drill all the way through it, and I don't think I'm going to weld it. I could put a tack weld right here, and I don't think I'm going to. I'll just put two set screws in it and call it a day. So we marked it, and we're going to drill it. You'll see how deep I go. It's just a little bigger than quarter inch. I mean to tell you that shaft is some hard metal. Oh, that's just right. I left those two bolts loose on the column under the dash so I could shove this thing back up in there so this is the right the right in the right position on the box and then I'll go up underneath there and tighten down the, the two bolts there.
if you're looking at this a couple of different ways, power steering box and the back of the pump. The back of the pump is 3 8 flare and the box is 7 16 flare. So both of them are gonna both the ends have for 3 8 hose. So I was gonna determine what length I needed. And man, it wasn't gonna be very long, but I I think what I'm gonna do is it's gonna be like this. Some of the guys have this turned around the other direction and it loops around and comes over in here. I don't want all that up in this area. So I think I can come back this way, come up a little ways for relief, and then come into this one. And then I'll just use this brass 3 8 for the return. It'll go straight from here right into the right into the return here. I think that'll be fine. I'll, I can use I'll probably get some uh, 3 8 line from them. I'll put a clamp on this one end. I might even take this in there and have them put a clamp or they may have uh, something that looks a little better than this one. We'll just see what, what, what we got. But right now I'm going to mock up a little piece of 3 8 hose that I have to see, see what length I need and how it looks. I think that'll work just like that. So I'll take this in there and I'll know how long to make the proper hose. There you go. Fixing to measure the belt and I noticed in the instructions it does say that they recommend a 53 inch belt. And then it says this can vary depending on diameter of your water pump, crankshaft, and power string pulley. So anyway, I'll show you how I measure those. Just take a rope. It's got to be fairly thick. Probably should be a little thicker than this. So it's going to probably end up being a little longer than what this shows because this goes deeper down in the grooves. So what we'll do is we'll put it around every pulley. Okay, I've got the adjustment all the way far forward as it'll go. Pretty close. So, I know that it's gonna to need to be a little looser than this so you can get it on, and then it'll adjust down. So here's pull it tight. I'll come back a little bit like this so I can have some room to get it off and on. I'm gonna mark that. And let's measure that, see how close it is to 53. black mark there it is 52 and a half so 53 would probably be about right um, I might try 53 I might buy a 52 and a 53 that's total inches and it's a three a three eight belt a three eight belt width mm-hmm just got back from the hose making place Stewart hose over here in Fort Worth and here's my pressure line and my return line I opted to go ahead and get a proper fitting for that return line even though it's not high pressure and I put a hose so to tell you what this cost these fittings here these two fittings both 3 8 they were both about 18 bucks a piece then we have this fitting over here which is the pressure side going into the power steering box it was about 20 bucks and then the hose was about five bucks for both lengths of hose and um, he didn't charge me anything to do the crimping on it but I got $71 in these two hoses right here
So we need to cut it right here. Since this has got steel braids in it, we can't just cut it a normal way. We're going to have to cut it with like a, oh, we could use a hacksaw. We could use a uh, bandsaw. I think I'll use my bandsaw on this one here. I'll show you how we do it. We have to tape it first. Well, after a few trips to the parts house, it turned out to be a Gates 7535 that fit it, which is actually uh, 54 and an eighth inches long. So I'm not going to tighten it up just yet. We'll wait till we get all this stuff in there, the radiator and whatnot. So here we go. This seven blade fan, man, it works awesome in here. There's hardly enough room for, for the radiator and this in there, but it works awesome. And um, the part number is a 4003718. So just Google that, works wonderful. All right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the power steering conversion on this thing. Got everything buttoned up, put fluid in it. I put fluid in it and let it sit for a little while while I was doing some other stuff. And uh, when I started it yesterday, man, it was quiet. It didn't make a sound. Listen to it. Enjoy the video of the power sharing install. It was uh, it was fun. I enjoyed doing it, and uh, I'll enjoy driving with power sharing from now on. So thanks for coming along. Hope you learned something from the video. And uh, click like, hit subscribe, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of the next videos. And we'll talk to you real soon.